What is The Matrix Awakens? We at Digital Foundry tried to answer that question in our most recent DF Direct, but even at 50 minutes length, we could not possibly cover everything here in as much detail as we would have liked. So in this video today, I will go over some of the lingering questions that the demo raises. I'll talk a bit more about how some of the rendering is achieved, and I'll go into more depth with the platform comparisons to see exactly what cuts Xbox Series S makes to run it all, and I'll round it all off with a shot-for-shot -shot comparison to the 4K Blu-ray of the first film, just to show how far real-time rendering has come in Unreal Engine 5. There's a good amount to talk about here, so let's get right into it, starting with the lighting. As mentioned in the DF Direct, Hardware Accelerated Lumen is an essential cornerstone to this entire demo, looking and running the way it does. Basically, the ray tracing acceleration hardware built into Xbox Series consoles or the PlayStation 5 is utilized here to bounce rays around the geometry of the game scenes. This allows for accurate off-screen reflections like those you can see on the sides of cars or in windows, or it is how you can see sunlight bounce around masonry, for example, in a realistic fashion. With the Matrix Awakens and Hardware Lumen, we are looking at real-time global illumination in the truest sense of the word. I have talked about global illumination before at great length in videos such as those covering Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, or even in an entire tech focus video dedicated to how developers have done GI before the advent of real-time ray tracing. So I do not want to retread old ground here when talking about The Matrix Awakens, but there's one aspect of the lighting here in this demo that is very new and compelling that I need to talk about, and that is emissive lighting. Emissive lighting is actually how all lighting starts, where there's a surface of some sort giving off radiation in the form of visible light. To imagine it with objects, think of hot embers of wood or heated metals like those found in a blacksmith's shop. The red glowy part of the surface on that object is emitting light onto the area nearby. Video games can't really do this type of lighting in a realistic or dynamic way. It's generally faked. That is what this Matrix Awakens demo does so differently in a big way. Firstly, there is the sky in the demo. Much like I covered in Metro Exodus, the entire sky in The Matrix Awakens is an emissive light surface. It's casting its blue hue onto the scenery of the city below. This is what gives the streets in shadow behind the skyscrapers their primary lighting, and it is a key reason why this demo looks so bright during the time of day it is set at. Since it is ray traced, the light from the sky can be occluded. That means objects can cast shadows from the sky light. This is really easy to see underneath cars, for example, in the demo, where there's these nice thick shadows underneath them. Or you can see it really well underneath highway overpasses, where you can see the shadow from the overpass above on the ground and the objects below it as it is blocking the light from the sky. The Matrix Awakens demo also uses this emissive lighting in a very special hidden feature. If you look around the city map in the open world section, you will notice scattered dots here and there. These dots correlate with interactive placards that allow you to turn off the sun and immerse the city in the darkness of night, but with one special difference. As a placard says, all direct lighting sources at nighttime are gone, and the entire city is now lit only by ray-traced emissive surfaces, from building windows, street lamps, or car headlights. So when you play the game at night, the game does not use any of the quote-unquote fake methods of light that we're used to seeing in games. This is full-on ray trace lighting only at night, and it's absolutely mind-bending. All the light you're seeing on screen right now is derived via ray tracing from emissive surfaces. I find it incredible that this is rendering at all in a coherent way given the internal resolutions of this demo and the internal resolution of the ray trace lighting. It's a bit like those Reister direct light demos we've seen from Nvidia, but this also includes bounced indirect lighting as well. Now, I don't mean to say that this emissive lighting in this demo is 100% perfect. I mean, we are talking about real-time rendering here. Things like headlights are not contributing in the way that they really should, but still, this is incredible stuff to see running on console at all, and it is something I really needed to mention. Another aspect of the demo that needs a bit of investigation and clarification has to do with the storage requirements and SSD speed needed. 
Since Unreal Engine 5 was unveiled for the first time on PlayStation 5 hardware, there's been a sentiment you could find online that the high geometric detail in Unreal Engine 5 and its high detail textures required ultra fast SSDs to run at all, and specifically the one found in the PlayStation 5. If you did think that, you might be wondering how exactly is the Matrix Awakens running at all on Series S or Series X? The Matrix Awakens demo has quite a bit more variation in camera speed than the original UE5 demo. Here's where we have some behind the scenes info from Epic that is very enlightening. In our interview with Epic, Michael Valiant, director of platform and rendering at Epic, echoed comments made by Brian Karras earlier in the year and mentioned to us that the demo and Unreal 5 in general are not very stressful on the streaming side of things. This demo uses around a 10 megabyte heap per frame, or around 300 megabytes per second when running at 30 FPS. While we cannot 100% confirm this in the demo ourselves at DF, since it is running opaquely on console hardware, we can sideways confirm it by looking at the Valley of the Ancients demo running on PC. Here in this Valley of the Ancients demo, which is also using UE5, I've locked the game to 30 FPS and I'm using 1080p to 4K upscaled TSR, which is similar to what we're seeing in the Matrix Awakens demo. When I monitor the disk usage here, we can see that moving around the game world at a high speed in the drone view, which is also in the Matrix demo, sees its highest disk usage at around 80 megabytes per second. Due to how the loading system works, this is the absolute height that it'll hit, and then the amount of disk usage rather rapidly lessens as textures that are already loaded in are cached, and much less streaming is used over time. So if you go into one area for the first time, you'll see higher levels of disk streaming, but then as you retread your ground in that area, you may see little to none. At its absolute height, I measured the Valley of the Ancients demo utilizing around 200 megabytes per second at 30 FPS, and that 200 MBS happened in the moment when the camera was transported from one area to another with completely different assets. So while I cannot directly get this info from the Matrix demo, I think by analogy we can show rather conclusively that the virtual geometry and texturing in Unreal Engine 5 is not very heavy on storage bandwidth. One thing we can test regarding the Matrix Awakens demo is how it fares with dramatically slower storage. Here thanks to a hint from our Patreon community, we have learned that you can tape off some of the contacts on an NVMe SSD and stick that into a PS5, thus turning a PCIe E 4.0 spec SSD into something dramatically slower. Our NVMe here is running at about 1.7 gigabytes per second, so a good chunk slower than the SSD in the series consoles and one third the speed of the raw bandwidth in the PS5's default SSD. And unsurprisingly, the Matrix demo runs the exact same on this dramatically slower SSD, thus confirming the information from Epic and our tests from Valley of the Ancients that that UE5's base feature set does not really require a lot of bandwidth. I think this is great news as this shows that the ultra high quality geometry and textures in this demo do not require very fast storage at all. Unreal Engine 5 instead smartly applies its detail with a lower amount of bandwidth. This makes sense though when one considers the purpose of Nanite and the virtual texturing in Unreal Engine 5. Both exist to only stream the detail in as needed based upon the size of an object or surface in screen space. Another aspect of the demo that we only spent a limited time on originally in the initial video was the visual platform comparison, which honestly between Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 is rather uneventful, but Xbox Series S makes this comparison exciting. To put it simply, Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 look nearly identical between shots, with only differences between them being changes in grain or denoising or other randomness between runs. I did notice some online commentary where people were trying to find differences in background geometric or texture detail between the big consoles, but honestly, the advantages one can find between shots are just random. In one shot like this one, the PlayStation 5 seems to have more higher streamed detail at a distance than the Xbox Series X here. But in this shot, the PS5 has lower level of detail streamed in at that moment at the distance than Xbox Series X. Basically, the demo has a lot of noise and variability for its visuals in the distance at points, and there's no consistently different level of detail between the two big machines. 
If there are other differences like internal resolution for example, temporal super resolution and the image denoising is doing an incredible job of washing away those differences. Regarding that image quality, in the original video I showcased two screenshots of Series X and PS5 with pixel counts on them, and this needs a correction. Now the pixel count was correct, but the information informing that pixel count has changed. Essentially, Epic have told us that when black bars are on screen, that means all the rendering is actually limited to an area between the black bars. The black bars are not an overlay like we see in other games or like we originally assumed. As a result, this changes the denominator in the fraction of our pixel counts. So Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 in this scene are not running at a near 1440p, rather 2560 by 1055 at 24 frames per second. And in this scene, they are not running at 1620p, rather 2880 by 1200 at 30 frames per second. This new lower total pixel count shines a very different light on Epic's temporal super resolution. The TSR here in this demo is essentially taking internal resolutions that are about one third of the output resolution and reconstructing them up. With that in mind, the image quality in this demo is really, really impressive, as most console games definitely do not reconstruct from such a low input resolution getting this level of quality. We really only see that on PC with Nvidia's DLSS. And it would be interesting to see this demo with Nvidia DLSS on PC or on PC at all, but I doubt we will ever see a PC version of the first part of this demo at least, presumably due to licensing concerns for the actors. But Epic has still actually given us the slightest hint of what this demo could look like on PC with some of the press shots that they released. Which as you can see, these are cinema 4K resolution shots with pristine, almost super sampled quality, lacking motion blur and film grain though. In side by side comparisons with the PlayStation 5 version, shots of the characters inside the construct part of the demo really come alive with the added resolution showing off just how high quality these character models, the lighting tech and hair rendering in UE5 really are. Yet interestingly, these high quality PC grabs also show off a bit of an uncanny valley effect that can occur in the latter half of the demo, where the lack of film grain and the motion blur on the press shots and character close up actually show off some of the deficiencies in the skin rendering a bit more, making the blurrier, more obscured shots on the left look a bit better in some aspects. It just goes to show how achieving realism is a very fine line, where it sometimes means obfuscating those things that are still actually rather imperfect. So now with those new updated pixel counts, we can get a real sense of how heavy this demo is on console, and there's no better evidence for how heavy it is than looking at Xbox Series S. And the easiest area to see that in is in the resolution, where TSR is bringing the demo up to 1080p, but internal resolutions are hovering around 1280 by 533 or 1555 by 648. And due to how motion blur resolution is scaled on console, that's probably one of the most visible reductions in quality you can see on Series S next to the others, where the motion blur on Series S often looks like video compression artifacts are all over it. The Series S's lower internal resolution has some other knock-on effects in visual presentation. On Series S, with its sub 720p internal res at moments, it has many fewer rays shot out for its ray tracing than Series X or PS5. So if you look at reflections on a surface for example, they can look really different like on this car here in the cinematic where the surface reflection looks so much less coherent on Series S which essentially changes the material of the car almost. Or if you look at the color of the lighting in this underpass here, the Series S is decidedly darker, presumably since the low ray count really biases the denoiser for the ray tracing here. Even then there are other differences on Series S, the detail of objects in the ray tracing structure is much lessened. Series S seems to have that same 200 meter-ish range or so that Series X and PS5 have, but the objects in the reflection are much less detailed when you look at them directly. And that is not all. Geometric and texture detail at a distance on Series S is paired back as I mentioned in the last video, and other effects are paired back in the cutscenes, like here, the explosion on Series S does not spawn a point light, as you can see. Or here, as the car flips, on Series S a number of the particle effects are called out. So there were a lot of hand tailored optimizations in here beyond shifting the resolution down on Series S. 
And as we know now, this optimization work was handled by the Coalition of Gears of War fame, who scaled this demo for Series X and S and added in a number of general optimizations, such as multi-core optimizations and bloom optimizations, which were then brought into the main branch for this demo, which means something really funny when you think about it. The Coalition, a Microsoft studio, made optimizations that also helped out the PlayStation 5 version here. Pretty neat, huh? And here we arrive at the last aspect that we did not get to touch on in the initial video, and that is comparison to the original Matrix film, an ultra high definition quality, which this demo does recreate a number of shots from. So let's take a look at this wide shot here from the Construct program. Obviously we have a different Keanu Reeves here in the middle and a different position for the television set, but just take a look at the shading and modeling on the chairs present in the demo. Here I must really echo my colleague John. This is probably the best chair rendering I've ever seen in a video game since that one room in control, if you know what I'm talking about. It's also rather impressive I think that they managed to capture the look of the ambient studio lighting here for the shot in the real time version. I really do wonder if they had reference photos of the set here to understand exactly how and where the lights are placed out of frame. Now let's move on to the main show of Neo waking up. And this is honestly the shot sequence that I find the most impressive in the entire demo. And it speaks for itself. Yeah, there are some slight differences here or there in terms of the placement of objects or what exactly those objects are, but just look at it. They are so close to one another that it is shocking. I think these shots just show off the absolute power of ray traced visuals that Lumen provides. There are just a few lights in the scene that interact wonderfully with all the materials bouncing light around. Then finally we have a number of close up shots of Keanu Reeves where they manage to capture all the detail in his skin and more, but the real stinger is him peering into the camera with the reflection of the screen text in his eye. This one shot is the most seamless in the entire trailer, looking pre-rendered essentially. But when you put it right next to the film, I still think it actually does show some areas where real-time rendering has some ways to go. The specular response on the skin is good, but it still thinks it is rather different than the real specular response on Keanu Reeves' face. The light is diffusing perhaps a bit too much on the right, essentially. But getting complex materials to look and run well with ray tracing is not exactly easy in real time. Perhaps that is the realm of the next, next generation version of Unreal Engine. But until then, that's really all I have to say about the Matrix Awakens demo. I think it is an awesome look at the future of real-time rendering that Unreal Engine 5 is aiming for. If you did enjoy the extra information in this video and analysis, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us out, support DF on Patreon to get this video in the highest quality available. If you want to talk to me about the demo, write a comment below or follow me and DF on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.